Hello class, welcome to the next segment in lecture 18, and in this segment we're going to take a look at some of the horizontal anatomy features of a typical cyclone, a typical uh, mid-latitude extratropical cyclone, and also take a look at uh, some of the details behind the anatomy as well. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. So the main thing that I'm going to focus on is the mature stage of the cyclone when it's typically at its peak intensity. And uh, as, as I mentioned before, you have this cold front, so you have cold air trying to intrude into warm air, warm air trying to intrude into cold air, but the warm air has a tougher time doing that. It has a tougher time going north than the cold, it's a lot easier for the cold air to come south than it is for the warm air to go north. However, because you have this area of uh, low pressure here, we showed in some uh, the previous uh, some previous lectures that when you have an area of low pressure, you have air that's all converging towards a common point. And a lot of times that means that this you're going to have strong southerly winds feeding into the center of the cyclone. So you're going to have warm, moist air coming up from uh, the tropical regions or trying to come up from the tropical regions. And sometimes uh, this warm, moist air, well, this forms what's referred to as the warm sector. But a lot of times the, the wind speed will weaken considerably as you get farther away from the cyclone. So you'll have uh, warm, moist air, relatively warm, moist air here and relatively cooler air uh, away from the cyclone. And this forms what's referred to as a prefrontal boundary. Uh, what's often referred to as a prefrontal boundary, and that's indicated by this dashed line here. That's represented by this dashed line. So you can also get a thermal contrast or a frontal boundary developing ahead of the cyclone, and that's due to the fact that you have a relatively warm, moist air here, relatively cold air over here. And one of the consequences of that is you can actually get showers and thunderstorms, that is convection, forming along this prefrontal boundary before the main cyclone actually comes through. But we'll talk more about that in detail a little bit later. But when you have this you have this warm, moist air just coming up and towards this direction of the low pressure. And to some extent, this goes toward the center of the low, but it also tends to rotate around the low. And it tends to, uh, once this warm air hits the cold air, because it has a hard time going through the cold air, a lot of times what happens is it will just ride up over the colder air that's near the surface. So this channel of warm, moist air creates a warm sector that is an area of relatively warm and relative, uh, relatively moist air. And then it hits this interface where it's, there's cold air at ground level. And it has a tough time going through the cold air, so it will usually just rise up over the cold air and just start ascending. It'll start rising over the cold air, so you end up with a region of... So right here, just north of the warm front, you've got cold air at the near surface, then a layer of warm moist air on top of that, and then above that, you'll probably have a cooler and drier air. And we'll take a look at a vertical cross-section of that a little bit later on. But uh, on the back side, or on the... Yeah, on the back side of the cyclone where you have the colder air trying to come southward, that cold air is typically going to be coming down towards the ground. So it'll start at a relatively high elevation, and then as it's coming towards this cold front, it'll be going uh, closer to the ground. And then as this, uh, of course, as this cold front uh, pushes eastward, or as it wraps around the cyclone, at some point you'll get an occlusion. Again, we talked about that in the in the previous segment. Now, typically what you get when you have a cyclone in the mature stage is you'll have some sort of surface-based convection and again, what we call the warm sector, which is the region of warm, moist, and unstable air. And again, this is just Mother Nature trying to resolve that imbalance. She's going to be trying to do something to resolve that there is, in fact, warm, moist air here and colder air everyone, everywhere else. And usually that's resolved by kicking off some sort of shower and thunderstorm activity. And usually this is what we refer to as surface-based convection. This could be in the form of supercells, squall line, or just regular thunderstorms, depending on uh, what else is going on in the environment. And again, at this interface where you have this prefrontal boundary where you have the interface between really warm and moist air and then not so warm or not as moist air, sometimes you can get showers and thunderstorms developing along that. Those typically tend to be weaker, but you can get some intense thunderstorms developing well ahead of the main cyclone uh, if the conditions are right. But usually these are a bit weaker because the upward motions along this prefrontal boundary tend to be weaker than the upward motions along, say, a cold front or a warm front. And north of the warm front, where you have this warm, moist air rising atop the cold air, you have some sort of upward motions, and those upward motions can then initiate uh, showers and thunderstorms as well. And a lot of times north of the warm front, you get a whole bunch of what we refer to as stratiform precipitation, which is a light shower or thunder shower, even thunderstorm activity that's primarily in, in the form of a layer of stratus clouds or something that resembles stratus clouds. And then embedded within that, you can get some isolated thunderstorms, some of which can actually be strong to severe. You can get uh, severe thunderstorms that can produce some sizable hail, even north of the warm front where the air down near the ground is uh, cold and stable. 
And I'm actually going to show a diagram to sort of illustrate how that how that exactly works. So here we'll take a look at the idea behind an elevated thunderstorm, ele elevated uh, what's referred to as elevated convection. So again, north of the warm front, you've got a layer of cold and relatively moist air near the ground level. And then on top of that, you've got warm and moist air that's uh, ascending over the cold air. And you can see we do have rising motion here, and that's going to try to initiate shower and thunderstorm activity. And uh, if the atmosphere is, if the vertical profile of the atmosphere is sufficiently unstable, and we'll talk more about that once we get into the severe weather unit, if it's sufficiently unstable, then that ascending air can then grow into a mature thunderstorm or a strong, a severe thunderstorm. But any, uh, on any given warm front, usually this is just light to moderate rain, uh, maybe a rumble of thunder or two. But if you've got a sufficiently unstable atmosphere, then you can start to be worried about uh, as thunderstorms, uh, even strong and severe thunderstorms. And since you have this upward motion, again, you can have thunderstorms that form. And the thunderstorm, what's really interesting about elevated thunderstorms is the thunderstorms, they draw in their supply of warm, moist air from this layer that's above the ground. That's why they're called elevated, because they're not drawing in their fuel supply from a air mass near the ground. They're drawing their fuel supply in a in the air mass that's elevated above the ground, hence the name elevated thunderstorm. So a thunderstorm draws in its supply of warm, moist air from a layer that's above the ground, so it's not receiving any uh, it's not receiving any of its fuel supply from this cold moist uh, cold moist layer near the ground. So elevated thunderstorms, because they're not uh, they're, because they're not drawing their air in from the surface, they pose basically no tornado risk. But these can produce sizable hail, and these also have been known to produce on occasion some strong thunder, strong straight line winds near the surface if the conditions are right. And also these can produce some torrential downpours and of course lightning with any thunderstorm, but usually these produce hail. These are prim primarily pose a risk for hail, but they can also pose a risk for straight line winds and also flooding. And that's in contrast to a surface-based thunderstorm where the thunderstorm is getting its supply from a layer of warm, moist air, which is actually near ground level. And these are the thunderstorms that can typically are more intense than elevated thunderstorms, but these are also the thunderstorms that actually have a shot at producing tornadoes because they are drawing in their fuel supply from a layer of warm, moist air, which is situated at ground level. And these typically tend to be, uh, when you have surface-based convection or surface-based thunderstorms, these typically tend to be the most intense thunderstorms, but you can also get some pretty intense elevated thunderstorms. Uh, I even remember a story about an elevated thunderstorm that actually produced baseball-sized hail. I think it was in the Tulsa area, but uh, uh, usually uh, elevated thunderstorms tend to be weaker than surface-based storms, but you can get some pretty intense elevated storms. But the surface-based storms, those are going to be the ones that are going to potentially pose a tornado risk if all the other environmental factors are favorable. And these are also going to pose much more of a straight line wind risk and typically more of a hail threat as well. So that's what we mean by elevated versus surface-based convection. So again, if I go back to this diagram, typically where you have warm, moist air at ground level, that's where you're going to have the surface base and the more intense convection. And a lot of times the cold front is going to kick up a squall line, but if the cold front is weak enough, it may not be a solid line. And we'll talk more about this when we get into the severe weather unit, which will be upcoming very shortly. And then north of the warm front, it's typically where you get uh, showers, maybe some thunderstorms, and if the atmospheric conditions are conducive enough, you can get some elevated thunderstorms that can be strong to severe. But that's going to do it for this uh, segment on the horizontal uh, anatomy of a cyclone. And in the next segment, we're going to talk a little bit about the vertical anatomy of the cyclone and also how it relates to uh, what you might see on, say, a 500 millibar map. So with that, I will see you all in the next segment.